In the summer of uh, 1968, Roberta came back to Chicago from graduating at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. She was an anti-war activist and a social justice activist. And having finished school, she was at, at loose ends. And she was taking a walk in the park. There's a big park in Chicago called Lincoln Park. Big open space. It's quite beautiful. With nothing particular on her mind except just to enjoy the nature of, of that park. And she heard... She heard uh, internally a very clear message Go to California and you will find what you're looking for. So she got together with a girlfriend and went out to California, a few thousand miles away, San Francisco, where everything was happening. And uh, when they got off the bus, wherever it was in California, uh, her girlfriend was attracted to one young man, long hair, beautiful guy. And the, you know, the mantra of that time was sex and drugs and rock and roll. So one guy, good looking guy, you know, with long hair, and she was attracted to another guy. He was wearing a bottle button, he was a Vietnam veteran, he was committed to not having sex until he got married, and he wasn't doing drugs, and he was carrying around God's feet. And she realized, after a while, that the voice that she had heard in the summertime in Chicago, just walking in the park, was Mayor Baba's voice, you know pointing her in the direction that she wouldn't otherwise have taken. But she had the courage and the uh, insight to follow that very vague direction of going 2,000 miles away and you will find the love you're looking for. And she was with another sense. Let me read. In 2011, we started to live here because we realized that Bauji might not be around any longer. He had quit traveling in 2010, I believe, was his last year. And uh, when we came for our usual two or three weeks, listen to this, a few days before March 15th, the NPR is going to close. That we just stay at the NPR, still, stay two, three, maybe four weeks, and then go back to Chicago. So a few days before March 15th, she's at the Gadi on the hill, and she hears, I want you to stay. I want you to live the way I live. And then she didn't pay much attention, because, you know, that's not a small thing. But then in the tomb, later on, when she was bowing down, she heard the same message. I want you to stay, to live, to experience what, where I live. So she told me, we're not going. What do you mean we're not going? We have to leave. The place is closing. We don't know how to live here, you know. She said, well, you can go if you want to, but I'm staying. Baba told me to stay. Okay, you know, and then the doors just kind of opened up, and we found that a place in there in Colony. And uh, we've been there ever since. And that was 2011. But that was the intensity of her commitment to that inner voice. This is the, the two guzzles that Baba gave to Bauji before he had his first guzzle.
try to catch yourself with Maya. It makes you a grimy beggar. Maya keeps you away from love divine and turns you into a pauper. Catch hold of the perfect master's feet. His is the one who will make who will make your life real life. The perfect master will adorn you with the jewels of spirituality and make you infinitely wealthy. Catch hold of the perfect master's feet, and the angel of death can do you no harm. O oh, Baal, it is befitting for you to always remember this secret. There was one more. This is like priming the pump uh, for Bauji, because he had never wrote and he never even thought of writing novels at this point. So Baba writes again, Drink the nectar of love and become must-like for the beloved. Make a kebab of your heart and eat it, then drink its blood. How long will you go on sowing stained patches of sin to the demand? Have the pieces of your heart stitched by the master tailor of love. Die such a death which makes you live after dying. Die to yourself and live only for others. Surrender your all to the perfect master and receive all from him. Bao says, if you want to talk about anything, talk only of love and nothing else. So a couple of days before she died, uh, we were in the hospital for two months, and she became progressively weaker and unable to have any voluntary motion except maybe for her hair. I was changing her diaper, as I had done many, many times over the previous several weeks, when she could no longer handle it herself, many times. But just two or three days before she died, uh, which was early Sunday morning, she said, don't touch me unless you're thinking about her. And I thought, stop telling me what to do. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm cleaning up your shit and you're telling me what to do. And she said, don't touch me until you're, unless you're thinking about her. I mean, in her, in her very difficult, I said, well, well, of course she's right. Don't do anything unless you're thinking about her. Demanded that of me. That was kind of, her, kind of her last gift to me, which to remind me. Don't touch anyone unless you're thinking about her. Don't do anything unless you're thinking about her. Yes, yeah, we're just starting the fire right now. Thank you, thank you very much. Peter, do I pay, do I pay somebody to go?
King Mehababa, I walk with the King, praise his name. No longer I roam, my soul faces home. I walk and I talk with the King. King Mehrbaba, I walk with the King, praise his name. No longer I roam, my soul faces home. I walk and I talk with the King. And I talk with the King.
near Baba Keith Went to the hospital, she got scanned, and PET scan, and MRI. Well, stage four. Uh, in Pune only. In Pune, it's Sayadri Hospital. So there was stage four cancer, and it was terminal. They were very straightforward, maximum two years. Well, it was two months. She died in Sunday morning. Early. Uh, Sunday morning. Yeah. Two days in Some. Well, that's what the radiation was to stop the uh, breakdown of the spine. But whether it worked or not, uh, she just got worse and worse. The cancer was all over, and the radiation was just for this area. So even if it went perfectly, it still didn't stop the big picture. Uh, and it was very painful. Yeah, she was in, but, but when she went on homeopathy, she had a special homeopathy guy in Montreal, Canada. He's one of the best in the world. Amazing guy. He treats terminal cancer patients. And really interesting guy. For like Andre. 30 years. Andre Singh, yeah. <laughs> Ananda's teacher, yeah. But it was just too late. He, he would call twice a day and adjust the remedies. How do you feel? So, can you take two photographs for me? Yeah. 